Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Work has started on a market code for a competitive electricity industry in South Africa. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the significance of this milestone. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this market code conversation? Well the big background is really that we've had a failing electricity market for nearly two decades visibly. And we've also failed to implement government policy from back in 1998, which sort of foresaw the restructuring that the industry would be going through because it took its lead from what was happening in the rest of the world. So it's an unbundling of the vertically integrated structure into um, a competitive generation market, um, a sort of monopoly wires business, transmission system operation, and a more competitive or more choice at the distribution level. So South Africa had that framework in mind all the way back at the start of almost democracy, but it wasn't really aligned with the political economy of the time. Eskom was very successful. We had low cost coal electricity coming into the system. It was being used as our industrial policy lever, attracting things like aluminum smelters. And uh, we couldn't see the failure that was un uh, uh, sort of happening. That only really started to become visible in about 2007 and instead of then you know going back to that 1998 model we doubled down on the vertically integrated structure and said Eskom must go and build two mega coal-fired power stations to get us out of the hole we put our eggs in that basket and unfortunately as we've seen over the number of years now or well, most of those eggs uh, failed or cracked we're now having to pick up the pieces and start again and move into the direction that most of the world has gone to and to try and de-risk our electricity system by having multiple generators, having a, a transmission system operator and starting to hopefully sort out the distribution end, which is tricky in South Africa. So it's dominated by municipalities, many of which are also under extreme pressure, some of which are actually failing. What still needs to be done to transition to a multi-market framework? So what we've had is uh, we've got an Electricity um, Regulation Act amendment bill going through Parliament at the moment. And that is separate from the unbundling that's happening at Eskom. So the unbundling that we know is well advanced and we thought the National Transmission Company South Africa would be in play from April 1, but that deadline was missed, and, but it's nearly there. They're talking about around July. Uh, they want to operationalise it unless there are um, objections, legal objections to that, so we'll have to wait and see whether anything arises there. But you know, we're having the, the structurally, we're putting in place a really a model that really just takes the transmission business in Eskom and puts it inside this national transmission company, South Africa. Important step in starting to level the playing field, but not the last step in getting a, a competitive uh, generation market. That's going to require the establishment of a, a transmission system operator and transforming the NTCSA into that. And that's going to take, in terms of the Act, there's a five-year transition period. So not just what the transmission business does today, but also does market operation, also does system operation, which is very much what uh, uh, system operation is a very core aspect of, of the NTCSA. So the market operation aspect needs to come into play and there's obviously legacy RPP contracts. There's going to be the legacy supply uh, from the, the coal fleet that we have to manage in this market and sort of somehow ring fence and sterilize and then have a way of in introducing uh, the, the sort of newer elements to that where we have sort of day ahead markets being people building into that, intraday markets to cover any gaps and then reserve markets that where we basically as we transition to, uh, well, any system requires, but as we transition more and more to uh, a renewables-led system, you're going to have to have these uh, these uh, guarantees uh, back in the back in the system that that any gaps that arise can be covered, even if those gaps are sustained. So, uh, a period of uh, you know whether where it's not shine, the sun's not shining, or it's cloudy, and there's um, uh, there's also very little wind. So that, that, that you need those, those markets also to emerge. So we're still at the very start of that journey, but the, the market code, which is now being consulted, 
uh, it, uh, it's really been discussed at the NECOM level, which is the National Energy Crisis Committee. It's been put out for some consultation now uh, through the NTCSA, even though it's not operationalized, but it's sort of in the public domain now. And that's going to be key to governing and setting the guardrails for that future market. Where is South Africa in its reform journey? I think it would be fair to say it's at the end of the beginning. So many people see how much we've done in terms of transforming Eskom from a vertically integrated monopoly. Um, we've seen the uh, regulatory reforms allowing uh, generates of distributed generates of any size to come into the system. And we see that we've got this amendment bill to the Electricity Regulation Act at the NCOP currently, where it, uh, the idea to approve it during the, the current parliament and for it to, to be elevated to the president for signature. So it seems like a lot's happened, but I think we're really only starting to scratch the surface of what this is going to mean. So we've got a long way to go, and as you say, a journey, and this journey is going to be probably iterative and probably going to require ongoing review because we're going to be learning by doing, as every country has done, and every country is somewhat different. We can't just cut, copy and paste, it seems, and say this is the system we're going to put in. We, we go, every system is going to be different, and we're going to have to apply our own minds, and we're going to have to be learning by doing, be open to review, um, and we also need regulatory and legislative process to be much more nimble than they have been in the past because there's a lot of balls that still need to land and these balls probably actually are going to stay in the air forever but it's uh, the issues around the structuring of tariffs and what, 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 what is fit for purpose. There's the market code as I mentioned, that's a, it's a major development. So uh, I think it's going to be, a, it's a long way still to go but directionally, we're on the right path. It's just that we mustn't expect that there are going to be no potholes along the way, no hurdles. There are going to be still many, and at this stage, possibly unforeseen. So I think our, led, uh, our lawmakers and our regulators are going to have to be alert and alive, nimble and flexible, and uh, we need to be consulting all the way with this ever-broadening ecosystem that is now the electricity supply industry. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.